All right, so today we're going to start chapter 2.9, where we're really going to be focusing on the creation, creating the African-American culture. So we talked about everything that's going on with slavery, yes? We talked about the Middle Passage, right? We talked about the whole process of what happened even after the Civil War with um, the, the 13th Amendment and that clause, right? So now we're going to talk about the idea of culture, and let's just get into it, all right? Um, again, here is our skills levels is always pretty much the same. Make sure we can analyze sources. Make sure that we also apply disciplinary knowledge as far as identifying and explaining context of events, development, and processes. What is today's, mm, date? today's date is... No, 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 no. What's in our... Uh... EQ, yes, I'm about, it's coming next. Okay. <laughs> All right. So make sure you're taking either... Z notes, Cornell notes, outline notes, or mind map notes. We all say focus notes in class. And again, like I'm saying, this time I am really checking these notes because I'm giving you a lot of information. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm it's coming to the next slide. All right. So I'm glad y'all are asking what's the essential question learning target. Y'all are getting better with it. Now, y'all, that also means you know that if I'm not giving you one, you got to make one up, right? Okay, just make sure because y'all did a good job with that. So you ask, here you are. Here is your objective. The learning target for today is students will explore how African Americans, y'all picking six for me. Not now. Can I give y'all a heads up? This is very much a Dr. T thing. And this is from me going to school at San Francisco State, which y'all all should know now was the home of black studies. And we went from black studies to Africana studies and African American. I was always taught you always hyphenate African dash. Americans. Did I got me on that? That's a very much me thing, but I will argue that maybe if readers see that and they have that historical background, they know why we do that, all right? So I'm telling you that I will always be nitpicky if you don't hyphenate. Everybody got it? Just that's a Dr. T thing. All right. Students will explore how African Americans developed a unique culture in the aftermath of slavery examining influences from Africa the slave trade and their experiences in America, period. All right, you will be rotating today. Is everybody here on that? Yes? Yeah, but we could talk about that when we get to unit four though, for sure. Right. Well, the use of the N word is also part of your culture, which I'm about to break that down. So we actually don't talk about that part. No. Make sure y'all talk very, make take very specific notes. This is very much the sociological side of me coming out. Is that right, clear there? We got to identify culture before we can talk about building a culture. So make sure y'all take notes. If you, especially if you did not take me for ethnic studies, where we had a whole week on this. All right. First, culture includes what? Let me let y'all say it together on three. We're gonna read the whole list together on three. One. Two, three. Language, beliefs, values, norms, behaviors, material objects that are passed on from generation to generation. All right. So make sure y'all have this. Culture is, y'all with me? Culture is a choice. This is why. To live, you have to eat. Is everybody got me on that? 
you have to drink water to a certain degree. Does everybody got me on that? But how you dress is a choice. That's part of your culture. How you season your food, that's a choice, part of your culture. Does everybody got me on that? How you lace your tennis shoes is part of your culture. Even to some degree, your dialect is part, is part of your culture because the, in the United States, the predominant language still may be English, right? But is every English around the United States the same, exactly the same? It's very much based on the culture. Does that make sense? So culture is a choice. Everything else is what you have to do. Is everybody clear? So everybody, so think about this. You have to eat. Is everybody clear there? But do you have to eat spaghetti? No. Do you have to cook with a whole bunch of peppers and spices? No. That's a choice, cultural choice. Does that make sense to everybody? Is everybody, is everybody follow? Is everybody good so far with that basis? Yeah. Okay. And again, I'm recording this, so you will be able to go back and look at it. Let's go a little bit deeper. Now, so main topic was culture. Now we go into subtopics. Is everybody follow? Is everybody with me? Yeah. So now you go into subtopics. The first one here is going to be what? Can I get a stick? Oh, KP. All right. Read this slide for us really loud for me. Yeah. All right, so ethnocentrism is everybody clear there? Ethnocentrism is when a person uses their own culture to judge someone else. That's all you got to put. Ethnocentrism is when I use my own culture to judge someone else. Is everybody clear there? Hopefully, just based on that first, y'all see why we're doing this right now. <laughs> okay, because this is all we've been talking about, right? True or false? I need y'all to give me more, um, comp, you know, call and response here. Huh? So there is a fine line between like patriotism and ethnocentrism. So the idea that I'm American, that's my culture, right? And if you're not American, I don't like you. It's a very fine line, but that's still technically, I'm judging someone else's culture based on my own. Is that right, follow? Um, ethnocentrism is potentially dangerous when it leads to forcing one's way of life on other cultures again think about what we've been talking about so much in this class this is kind of what we've been seeing my culture is superior because i believe in jesus christ and because you don't believe in jesus christ you're you're not as superior as i am therefore i have to force my belief of jesus christ onto you do i follow me on that is everybody clear so far now be clear when you talk about these ideas of culture Again, are they forces or do you or is it a choice? It's a choice. So keep that in consider. Okay. So the, and the reason we're doing this is because make sure we're going to how we create a, a culture. Xenophobia. Can I get another stick? So again, these are all subtopics, right? So culture is the overall topic, right? And we're doing subtopics right now. Who you got? Alyssa. Alyssa, what you got for xenophobia? So now this is when you have a fear of another culture that's not your own. Is that right clear there? We saw this a lot during COVID. And again, I really hope how y'all, y'all do know class lectures can be used as sources, right? You just gotta cite them correctly, which is the catch. But if you look at xenophobia, we've been talking about that throughout the class, but then also a great example of that because y'all just lived through it is COVID. COVID happened in 2020 and post COVID, there was a lot of xenophobia from anybody who has uh, Chinese ancestry, right? Because they were blamed for giving us COVID. And again, I say that in quotation marks. Is everybody follow me on that? So xenophobia is a fear of another culture that's not your own. The United States history is littered with, scattered with that and littered throughout the whole history books of that. Everybody clear there? Yeah. 9-11 is another example because post 9-11, who was everybody blaming for 9-11 and afraid of? Anybody Muslim? Now, here, you do know being Muslim is a very big religion in the world, right? Yeah. So you have xenophobia against half the world. Do y'all see the problem with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next up is going to be subcultures and countercultures. You see, you hear this a lot, especially right now during election time. This is 2024, doing a very contentious election as far as counterculture, right? So let me get someone to read subcultures. Who y'all got? Mars, read subcultures. Oh, oh just, just read. Subcultures consist of groups with a common interest that has distinct values, beliefs, and norms. Examples are religious groups and ethnic groups. All right, so religious groups, so subcultures. So everybody's American, yes? Yeah. 
Then you have subcultures. You're from Cal. I'm from California. Is that right? Got me on that. Another subculture. I'm from South Central LA. Is that right? Follow me on that. I went to school in San Francisco. That's when I really understood subcultures because everybody said, "Oh, I'm from LA." Yeah, but then you from Pasadena. That's not LA. You know what I'm saying? Or you from uh, Long Beach? I feel you, but that ain't LA. I am from South LA. That is like the hood. That's where boys in the hood is from. I know exactly the house. You see the subculture so far? Then we get into ethnic groups so, of South LA. So I grew up against, I'm not grew up against, I grew up with both black and brown mostly. Is that right? I got me on that? I can count on my hand how many um, Caucasians or European Americans I had in my school. Is that right? Follow me on that? I went to college in San Francisco State. I was culture shocked. I was like, oh my God, I'm the only black in my whole class. But again, subcultures. Is that right? Follow? All those things made me who I am and tell you how I see things. That makes sense? Okay. The next one you got is counterculture. Who you got for counterculture? Eugene. All right, Eugene, read countercultures. Make sure I keep these six for me together. All right, so countercultures, again, these are going to be the subcultures that go directly against what? The mainstream culture. Does that right clear there? Which is why it's called counter. Huh? They, like, you use the hippies for an example. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement can be an example. Um, the Black Panthers can be an example. The Brown Berets can be an example. All these can be different examples of quote unquote countercultures. Um, yeah. Is everybody still with me? All right. Now, let me say this for your sake of your eyes, you should have logged into this Nearpod. That way you got to train your eyes to look. But we're going to be moving once we get done with all these culture definitions. All right. Wait. What? Which one you didn't get? But which one you didn't get? Counterculture. What's counterculture again? Subcultures that that go against the dominant group. Okay. All right. Now what we got is conflict theory and what? Culture. All right. Let's talk about conflict theory. First off, be clear, y'all. Everything I'm giving you right now, these are this is like nuggets y'all can be using for your research. Is that right, clear there? Because you talk about arguments, right? I am giving y'all where you can make arguments. Am I not? Am I not? Because yeah. remember, your thesis for your projects for AP African American Studies, the root of it is that you have to be argumentatively based. Is that right? Got me on that? Yeah. Is that right? Follow. So this is where y'all can be editing now your thesis statement because most of y'all got two out of four as far as the scoring. This is where you get yourselves up to that four or five. Now, if you start thinking about culture, now, as far as countercultures and subcultures, that's where you can start elevating your, your numbers at. So conflict theorists, go ahead. Someone who's reading that, who's reading that for us? Yeah. Liam, go ahead and read that for us. Conflict theorists suggest what? All right, so conflict theorists, they basically are saying society is always struggling because we're trying to look for resources, water, good schools, good public tra uh, transportation, good homes. Is that right? Follow me so far. So because of this, there's always going to be those that win in society and those that's going to lose in society. Is that right? Follow? Certain cultures win more often than others in some cases. But what conflict theory said, that's what creates the conflict. Is that right, follow? We all try to get these resources. Most parents want their kids to go to good school. Here's the problem. Where you live may not be that best school. Y'all follow? So then you might try to get them in the magnet program, but here's the problem. You might have a magnet student that then is driving 40, 50 miles just to get to school. Y'all follow? So then they play sports. That's even worse. Y'all get it so far? It can be cause a problem. So everybody's trying to get these resources. I'm using school because, you know, we're in high school. But these resources are what everybody fights for. And a conflict theorist is basically saying we're all jockeying for position. We're all fighting. Because here's the end of the day. Everybody's going to try to go to UGA. Everybody's trying to go to Vanderbilt, University of Miami, things like that, right? But at the same time, everybody's funneling in from different subcultures, right? And conflict theory is saying, do you think every student had the same availability to things? 
That's where you start having those issues at. Is that right, Claire? We good so far? Any questions? Any questions? Okay. So what we're going to do now is watch this quick video. You're going to have a couple of questions here to answer in the Nearpod. That's going to close our definition portion of the idea of culture. Okay, y'all? Yes? All right. So listen, watch, and answer. You should be in the Nearpods too. All right, what is one thing your culture values and why? I'm gonna give you all about two minutes to answer this question here. So this is opinion based, yes or no? This is part of your grade too. So make sure y'all are still doing it. So four people got their heads down, okay. I'm not gonna wake you up, but that's your grade. So go ahead and give me your responses here. Y'all, I'm not thinking about SAQ, short answers. Is that right, clear there? Does that make sense? Emphasis on what? Emphasis on what? Short. All right. Y'all now have about a minute and a half to go ahead and answer this question. This is all opinion based. Go ahead and answer this question. Well, you know about finishing this assignment. You know about that, homie. What's up with that? Well, you know about finishing this assignment for you to get a good grade. What you know about that? You know I love y'all, right? Like I do. But I'm always keep it real. Y'all got like 45 seconds. So... Make sure I answer it. They said money, family. Um, where's the rest of the sentence? <laughs> yeah, you know. My culture values both multi mythic aspects of this society. What? What does that mean? Who texts me? I don't know. Yeah, I especially respecting your image like the society. All right, let's keep going. All right. What is something that that's part of your regional culture? So what is something that's part of your regional culture? Go ahead and type that in real quick. What? I still want a sentence. Give me a complete thought. Give me a complete thought. You got one minute. Give me a complete thought. So, yeah, we type it in here. So, again, what is something that's part of your regional culture? Be clear, this is really just a test on what I just taught you and if you was you paying attention or not. Wait, 
That's what I'm trying to see if you understand. Y'all can talk a lot, but like I just said, this is really a formative assessment to see if you understand what we've just been talking about. I don't worry about your spelling. I ain't care about that. If you didn't spell it straight, what? No, that's that. We have barbecue. Yeah, everybody has a level, different type of barbecue. Since people call it stuff different. You have like 20 seconds. <laughs> Wagon. A common phrase, Lord, to my dad. All right, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. I mean, it's, it's, hey, you know, I'm glad some of y'all are doing this because it'll make it my grade no disassessment easy. So let me make sure this is very clear, too. Some are taking it more serious than others, and then you wonder why people treat you the way you treat they treat you. That's all I'm going to say. You got to be able to understand there's a time for play, a time for business. This is time for business. So... Take care of your business, and you'll be good. Let's talk about them shoes. All right, and we're still playing. Let's keep. Let's get back on track, folks. Listen up. All right. Um, everybody, put NA real quick for this one. Just type in NA real quick. You know, I got a doctorate, and I'm not your coach. Just, just saying. You know, I'm just being real. Now, every black man's a coach. I'm just saying. Just being real. Y'all know that stereotype is out there, do you not? Just being real. But if I have, but yes, because I coach the softball team right now. Here, on the field, <laughs> on the field. Yes. Okay, real quick. Yeah, I need to go. Make sure everybody got the NA. Yes, sir. I'm totally lost. Possible, yeah, yeah. You could do that. All right, for time, let's keep going, y'all. All right, what are some things about your culture that are important to you and why? Again, short answer question, and I hope y'all take it more seriously. Y'all took some of these other questions. Or are you just saying you ain't been paying attention? I mean, that's, that's cool too, I guess. <laughs>
All right, that's time. Let's keep going. Hit that inner key and let's go. Whenever you talk about something. It is all the other stuff we got. All right. Now, let's get into 2.9A. All right. So now you should have a background on culture, yes or no? Okay. So you should have a background on those cultural terms. All right. So 2A is where we focus on describing African-American forms of self-expression in art, music, and language to, that combine influences from diverse African cultures with local sources. So for those people that are doing projects so far that deals with anything in the arts, this is where you should be paying attention. Has everybody followed me on that? Yes, okay. Let me get a stick for someone to read the first bullet point. Huh? Roman. What? Roman, go read the first bullet point. All right, so the first thing we got to understand that what we call African-American culture is very much based on blended influences. Everybody got me on that? They blended everything to what they have now. They blended the original African ancestry where they came, and we talked about that in Unit 1. They blended whoever enslaved them, and then they invent, they blended even those who was around them. Does that make sense, everybody? So there was a blended culture. Now, they also incorporated different aesthetics. Is that right clear there? Uh, one of my favorite classes in my master program at Clark with Dr. Black, y'all can look him up, he was pretty cool, was my African aesthetics class. That class was hard, but I understand it more now because the idea of aesthetics is basically how things look. Does that make sense everybody on that? How things look and how does it make it feel to, how does it make it feel to you? So as far as how they made pop, um, pottery, Quilt making, even storytelling and uh, memory keeping was done through this. This is a lost art. Does everybody got me on that? My mom, she doesn't make quilts, but you know when you get the yarn, she does crochet. Does everybody got me on that? That is just like a quilt very much, though. It's still a story. Does that make sense? And my mom just did it because that was her stress relief. That's just what she enjoyed to do. Um, dang, I'm sorry, y'all. This thing about my mom. But... The idea of this is a form of art because of the way she did the crocheting because it looks like a quilt. Does that make sense on that? And you got to understand that in that quilt, they all all these little um, patterns. And again, let me be clear. I'm not going to say everybody that has ever made a quilt understood what they were doing. But these patterns here, they have meaning to them. Does that make sense? And sometimes that meaning is just so deep and great in who you are, you don't realize you're doing it. Does that make sense? This is also why I say sometimes people wear, you wear dashikis. Dashikis have meaning to them. You don't just wear them. Is everybody clear there? You got to know what you're wearing and what you're doing with it. But this quilt making is a form of expression, but also a form of art. Like that 
So for a lot of people that's doing, again, projects dealing with art, this is some of that earlier art tradition that we're talking about as far as storytelling. Is that right clear there? That predates blues, rap, and things of that nature. I saw a hand up. Did I see a hand up? Go ahead. Yep, he still teaches at Clark. Not the black. He's still, he's still over there. All right. What did y'all miss? For time, if I keep going back, we're not going to get done. What did you miss? Answer. Y'all have to, so I'm not going back no more. Y'all need to go look it on your own time. I'll go watch this recording. Is that right, clear there? That's how we got to roll. All right. Now you all going to have your own time. African quilt making. Is that right, follow me on this? Here's a video. What y'all going to do here on this discussion board is that share your thoughts in two to three complete sentences. Is that right, got me on that? Does that make sense, everybody? All right. So, uh, yeah, you can do that. All right. This is the video right here, African quilt making. Two or three sentences on your discussion board. All right, so go ahead and put in your responses in two or three sentences. Mean the minimum is how many sentences? And three is the what? Max. All right, go ahead and give you all a couple seconds to do that real quick. Also know that, yes, you could type them in, but you always have the option of doing a video or doing a voiceover if you want to do that too. Just do like a video recording of your responses or sometimes you even can just do like a verbal response. It's up to you on that. All right, we got about another minute or so on that part. And you can like other people's comments as well, please. That's totally cool. All right, let's get ready to move on.
All right, let's go ahead and rotate too, please. Go ahead and rotate. Move to another seat. Stretch your legs. See the world differently. If you're charging, there are three other, four other charge stations around the room. You can go move to as well. Say hi to a new classmate. It's busy back to like my younger ages when I used to pick up. Please, Dr. T. Please Make sure you close that door when you leave, okay? She's just going right now. Yeah. All right, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Now, Sear, go ahead and read this essential knowledge for us, please. For All right, if you're doing something dealing with music, you got to talk about this. Does that make sense to everybody? If you're doing any time to talk about music, you got to talk about the historical significance of the drum. Remember, we talked about earlier how in some states and colonies, it was outlawed because it was a form of communication, right? Um, the banjo and also the rattle. So all this has a lot of historical significance going back to West Africa. And as you all been talking, we've been talking about throughout the class, we first started in West Africa, right? No, first we started in Africa. Just in general, when they talk about how the, the different cultures started moving towards West Africa for different reasons, right? So this is why you have these influences here in the Americas. And be clear, it's not just here in the United States. It's also throughout the whole Caribbean and specifically down in Brazil and South America, where you have some of the largest enslaved populations coming over. Are we good so far? Any questions? Excellent day. Oh, I I'm listening. No, that's not the question. <laughs> What's your question? No, it's still two uh, nine eight. We're still in A. What are you eating? That's a question. Nice. Uh, just mixed fruit and some whipped cream. All right. Essential knowledge. So, enslaved Africans arrived here. I don't want to say just the United States, but also just throughout the whole Americas with knowledge of both Africa and European languages. Everybody got me on that? As we talked about earlier, they was already mixing, right? They were already trading with each other. Did everybody follow? So they had some commonality. Now, Africans had participated in long-distance trade, like we said earlier. Um, enslaved African-Americans also continued this practice in the United States and developed choral, excuse, Creole languages such as Gullah, which combines elements of both Af of West Africa and European languages. We are here in school in the outskirts of Atlanta, Georgia, right? Yeah. Right over in South Carolina and on the um, east coast of Georgia, you have very strong Gullah communities. Does it make sense on that as far as a certain culture? Most people don't even realize that, but I do want to make sure we look at that a little bit because it's so close to home. Is that right, Follow? Yes. So do you think every culture is Gullah or is it called Gullah Geechee? Both. I've heard both ways too. Gullah Geechee, Gullah, Gullah. It depends on where you're coming from. Okay. Is everybody still good so far with that? All right. Okay. Let's keep going. Now, again, should you be writing out every single word? No, no but it's your responsibility to go and study this stuff because all this is in CTLS. 
There's one of us right now is actually going through the presentation as in CTLS, not this one, which is fine. All right. Now, that same type of dashboard, we're going now to 2.9b. We're going to describe ways enslaved African Americans adapted African musical elements from their ancestors and have influenced the development of American musical genres. Again, if you are doing something with art and music, you better be paying attention here, okay? I'll give you some gems, especially these videos I'm about to show you. This is where you want to pay attention to. Now, enslaved people adapted Christian hymns. They learned and combined rhythmic, blah, rhythmic and performative elements of Africa. The call and response is the biggest one. The clapping, uh, the improv, 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 improvise, not improvising, improving, right? All those are very much deep, and people do that without even thinking about it as far as the African culture. If you're so far with me, say yes. Okay. Now, they did this with Bible themes, okay? So I will argue many of, particularly in Southern Baptist churches, many of those songs you heard, I'll argue probably has some leniency and some historical significance dating back. Does that make sense? Because of the way it's sung. Uh, creating a distance of Af American musical genre was done through this. And this became the foundation of later musical genres, including gospel, blues, and I will argue hip hop. I'm not saying rap, I'm saying hip hop. Is there a follow me so far? Um, that call and response is big. That clapping, like as you're singing, you're clapping, you're making a beat. Is there a follow me on that? Um, certain artists like Kanye West was really good with sampling and added that in there. Um, Mustard is doing that right now with some of his tracks. Not like us, it's doing all of that. It's just that you may not even realize it. It's a reason why it's so catchy. Is that clear there? So certain songs that you know you just cannot forget, it it, it has some of that root historical significance to it. I was gonna say groups like the Tribe Called Quest, like De La Soul, like the, the whole Tribe Called Twist, tri Tribe Called Quest, De La Soul, The Roots. Yeah. All those groups do that a lot. Yeah. Outcast. Yes. I won't call it Afrocentrism yet, or, but it has the Afrocentric undertone to it, you know, it's definitely. Okay. All right. Now, for this particular video here, I want y'all to listen to it. We're not going to make you watch the whole video, but you're asking the question, what elements of African culture can you identify in this video? Think about everything we've been discussing so far up to this time and just in what you may know in general. So here's the video. Again, we may not play the whole thing, but I do want you to hear it. So listen, we're not listening to the whole thing. Y'all hear the clap? You hear a drum? Can you just make your response on the session board? Okay. Now, this is more of an instrumental. But I want y'all to make sure y'all get this response in. So, I kind of told y'all with it, right? But go ahead and fill this in real quick. We do have some time constraints, so we got to move, y'all.
All right, let's keep going. So make sure you got that answer put in real quick. And while you wait, you can like other people's. All right, let's keep going. All right. For this one here, you're answering a different question, okay? For this one here, you're going to be answering, how do you think these forms of expression helped enslave Africans survive and build communities? Everybody got to make sense on that? Okay. Let's go ahead and answer that. How do you think these forms of expression helped enslaved Africans, Africans survive and build community? We almost done. Both. Look at both the music and the language. Uh, we got to move for the sake of time. I can't wait on you now. All right. We still got some more videos to watch, too. All right. This video came up, but it's fine. So once you just answer the question, it's good. All right. Make sure you have your responses in, please. All right, let's get ready to move on, okay? All right, now, let me get a pop. Oh, where's my sticks? All right, let me get. Actually, go ahead and read B. Try it. So sound it out phonetically. So, sin, e, gam, beyond. Yeah, yeah. I, don't like that. I hear so many side conversations. Go ahead. West Central Africans arrived in large numbers in Louisiana, which influenced development of African blues. American, American blues, blues contains the same musical system as a flooded from the Senegambian region. Who's ever heard of blues? It's very I'm gonna say y'all better, y'all better raise your hand. All right. Um, tomorrow we may be doing something with the blues. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. Um, it's not that it's necessarily sad. It's telling stories. Y'all got me on that. So if you're doing anything with music, I'm, I'll argue you can't make any kind of argument about your music, your opinion on it, without looking at the blues because the blues is very much a I'll say godfather of the modern day hip hop because you're still telling stories. Everybody got me on that. Um, but at the same time, it's the blue, many people argue that the blues started where. Where? In Louisiana. But in Louisiana, it was based on West African experiences, particularly in Senegal. Is there a got me on that? We follow me? We good? Okay. Sorry, everybody, listen up. Just where the people are moving from. Okay. All right. So I'm going to skip something and come back to it. Is there a got me on that? So this next video. This is going to be where we all going to use your TED Talk she set, but I'm going to come back to this one. Is it right clear there? Okay. So I'll come back to this. We're not doing this right now. Come back to it. All right. 2.9 C. All right. Explain the multiple functions and significance of spirituals. Okay. All right. Music and faith traditions combined in the United States in the form of spirituals. The songs enslaved people song, sang to articulate their hardships and their what? Hopes. Hopes. Now, African Americans religious practices serve social, spiritual, and political purposes. Enslaved people used spirituals 
to resist the dehumanization conditions and injustice of enslavement, express their creativity and they and to communicate strategic information such as warnings, plans to run away, and methods of escape. So just like I talked about earlier, like cornrows was um, done a very strategic way on the slave plantations as a map. Does everybody got me on that? As a map to tell you where to go and things of that nature. These songs was also done that way, right? So go down Moses, for example, is one of the more popular ones that was used as a way of communication. Y'all still with me? Yeah. Okay. Huh? No, I'm trying to think about this, the, the lyrics and it's not coming to me right now. The lyrics of the spirituals often had double meaning. These songs used biblical terms of redemption and deliverance to alert enslaved people of, to opportunities to run away via the what? Via the what? Underground Railroad. Some of us is like moving on and then we're not paying attention. Spirituals reflect African-American, African heritage, and the American identity all in one. They preserve both the rhythm and performance styles of West Africa, and they also express contemporary experiences in America. Does everybody follow me on that? So in other words, I always say this, that music shouldn't be done just to make money and just to be done. It should have a meaning behind it. Otherwise, you're kind of going against the tradition of particularly Black American music in the United States, and I'll say even argue across the world. Music shouldn't be done just to do it. You have to have, you're supposed to have some kind of level of meaning to it. Yes? That's up to you. That's your, that's your choice. Um, it's kind of like where you're trying to go. But again, based on the oral history tradition that many of us share, the point of music is to tell a story. Okay. All right. Let's keep going. Really quick. Really quick. Go. I have too many side conversations going on. I am not going to give my thoughts and biases towards modern day music. I am saying literally this. Based on what we're discussing, the oral tradition has very deep meanings. Everybody got me on that? Music was always used as a means of communication, uplift, and storytelling. If it's not doing that, I would say it's missing that part of that culture. Is that right, follow? Okay. And then y'all can make your own, from your own ideas from there. All right. For the sake of time, I got to keep going because we still got like a 10 minute video to watch. All right. Now, this video here is something you're going to need to watch on your own. This is going to really focus on something y'all should know about already because of U.S. history and past classes as far as the Underground Railroad. Is that right, follow me on that? And who is this um, lady right here on the screen? Terry. Terry Tubman. So you should know that one on your own. No, that's going to be for the TED Talk. Now, oh, I don't want to go that. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Yeah. All right. So, now I do want to make sure you look at these source notes so you can take a maybe a screenshot of this and make sure you refer back to it. Um, it the two main sources you got to know, know for this particular um chapter is going to be the quilt and also what would this be considered pottery. the pottery does that make sense there are so many side conversations going on i really pray for y'all all right so and y'all know do i am i not constantly going to these sources yeah so make sure you know them so i'm telling you review this right here as far as what you see here take a screenshot of it as far as the links in these source notes so make sure you're clear and understand that okay all right so I'm actually going to go back again and tell everybody this. You're going to need to, on your own, definitely by tomorrow, is to watch this TED Talk. Um, this is going to be slide 20 of the Nearpod. This TED Talk focuses and makes the argument that the blues started in Louisiana, which kind of goes back to what we are talking about. Is that right, got me on that? You will finish this TED Talk by using this worksheet here, where it says TED Talk Viewing Sheet. What is the title of the TED Talk? Everybody just says... The Blue Stars in Louisiana. That could be your title. The speaker, number two, you can put N.A. because I forget if he gives you the name or not. And it was the main topic of the TED Talk. You asked the number four. Uh, the, the TED Talk speakers are known to be effective speakers. What are some of the mannerisms or things you notice about the speaker that makes them a good or bad speaker? 
What are two things you learned from this talk and how could you apply this to your life? Now, this TED Talk, you do not have to get it through here to Nearpod. If you go into YouTube and type in Blue's TED Talk, Louisiana, it will come up. Does everybody follow me there? Yeah. Yes. So be about 10 minutes. No, it's about a yeah, about 10 minute video. It's just that right now we don't have the time for it. Because you know, Bell's about to ring soon for us. Right. <laughs> we got a little bit under um 10 minutes. So you need to watch this on your own, do your worksheet, and post all that in your notes to CTLS. Does that make sense, everybody? Do not submit it yet because we still got chapter two to do as well. So maybe we'll bring this back tomorrow. So yeah, you need to have this TED Talk done by tomorrow. If you've been paying attention to class, that's your hint. All right. Okay. Mental break. Y'all owe me two minutes. All your phones off your ears. Make sure y'all pay attention. Go ahead and shut down your computers. Close your computers. Do all that right now. Let's go ahead and have a mental break before we go to our next class. Because I hit y'all with a lot of information. Let's listen, do, and break right now. So go ahead and pack up all your stuff very quickly. And let's get ready to have a mental break. This is not where you're going to put your head down this here on the table. We're going to do as the video tells us to do. And we're going to focus on learning the idea of box breathing to help us deal with stress, anxiety, frustration, everything in between as well. This is basically just, that's what this is right now. <laughs> so in other words, this is a social emotional break and we're going to talk about breathing and, and how it's to relax some level of meditation as well. This is graded, so let's get it. Of course. We got about one minute. We got one minute. <clears throat> All right, we start in three, and I mean everybody should be on the screen. Two, listen up. All right, most of y'all did good there. All right, if you learned something new today, give me a clap on three. One, two, three. If you feel like you understand something a little bit more about culture, music, and art in general coming from the black experience, give me a yes on three. One, two, three. Yes. All right, I appreciate you all. Thank you for your hard work. 
and let's get back at it tomorrow.